Gina Tesca. I've got a real funny, uh, not a funny feeling, but I find you a very interesting character. We've only just met today, uh, which is a good thing, really. And we watched you really in them pads. You've got some real immense power there. Tell us a bit about yourself. What did you start doing in combats for women? Tell how long ago? Tell me. Well, a bit I started about when it. I was twelve. Um, I, didn't, I just really wanted to get into to boxing or kickboxing because um, there was nothing down around where I lived and even now not that much women, women orientated down there it's coming and out now you live in Plymouth live in Plymouth always yeah. lived in Plymouth always lived in Plymouth okay. yeah. yeah so I went along to a, a kickboxing um, gym and done a few lessons and just loved, loved the sport um, and then I had my first um, bout when I was when I was 12 yeah 12 years when old. I was 12 like a full contact full contact yeah okay. full contact um, and I went right up to, I was 17, and I think my last, but I, I fought for the British kickboxing title when I was 17. Mm -hmm. um, and I had two more after that, and then that, that was it, then I stopped then. So in your whole career of kickboxing, yeah. and you fought Thai? I fought Thai. With I'd, the knees? Yeah, I fought Thai. Um, I fought for the British Thai boxing title, only ever fight in Plymouth. Really? Um, I fought one of Sandy Oaks girls, it was a really good, recognised gym, and they were it's a tough girl. It's yeah. from Manchester. Yeah, yeah. very good girl. Um, and she came down, and I gave a lot of weight away, and on that sport, it's not good to give away. No, no, <laughs> but no. because it was at home, I took it anyway. And did you win that fight? It was a draw. It was yeah, a draw. it was a draw, yeah. Tough fight? Very tough, yeah. Was there plenty of knees? Lots of knees. For, um, lots and lots of knees. On the next day, I couldn't actually walk. <laughs> now, this is why I said that, because even for me, with women's boxing, obviously I promote women's boxing, but did you find it dangerous to take the strikes, you know, to... I preferred, um, I did like getting in and I like using my hands and getting in and having yeah, a fight. I see that with you. And, I, fa and I find when, when, you're, when you're tying, they're in the clinch, clinch yeah. you, you're restricted then, you know, it's just the knees and, and the grappling. And I know stuff. it's quite big, but it is, it, it, for me, it's very raw oh, when the knees come out into the chest and yeah, into the midsection. Yeah. To be honest, I didn't really, Good. they weren't that bad, you no, know, it was all right. No. When it's happening, I don't really feel it. It's the next day when you're yeah. sore. Didn't you fight with the elbows, though? We had elbows to the body, not to the head. Elbows yeah, to the body. Yeah, not okay. to the head. When, Martial arts, kickboxing and Thai boxing, mm -hmm. from the age of 12, 12 up to you were 17. 17, yeah. Okay. Tell me about your mum and dad. What did they think about that? Was it dad that pushed you into it? Well, no, he got, he got me, I, he found me a club because that's what I wanted to do. He um, said that to him, that was your yeah, decision. Yeah, it was my decision. I wanted to go and do that. They, my mum came when I fought for my British Thai boxing title. Oh, never again. She wouldn't, yeah, she didn't like it. And, um, well, she was up at the ring and screaming okay. and shouting. Okay. But, um, yeah, she... So my brother was never into anything. None of my family has been into anything like this, but I really just just loved the sport. I just loved it. I just want. Okay. How many brothers you got? I've got one brother. Any more sisters? No. Nope. Okay. What actually was it that was the seed that was planted that you wanted to fight? That's what I'm trying to... I just think I love being pushed. I love the, the challenge of something. You I love being yeah, pushed. Yeah, I love, even now, I love the fact that I've got something to aim for and I want something to go for and... So what influenced you as a 12 year old? Did you just see it or did you hear about kickboxing and just... Yeah, I think it was just, he just like, hearing about it, just the... With me, back in the day, it was Bruce Lee in the 70s. Yeah, so. I couldn't say it was nothing particular on television or anything. I used to be into, I used to, to be honest, at school, I was a little bit of a heller as well, fighting. And until when I started that, everything stopped outside and stuff. Was you a tomboy? I was in a way, I didn't play football, but I loved like, I was rough in time, I'd have a fight with the boys and stuff, mm. but I was also very, I was still quite a girl as well, I wasn't yeah. like a, okay. yeah, like a, like a tomboy. Tell me your age. I'm 40. So you're 40, so probably out of, you know, all the ladies that we've got that are coming on to fight, you could be the oldest mm -hmm. lady, not an old, you know, like that, but looking at your fitness and looking at the power that you generate, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome, really, mm. to see you working like that. Now, tell me about your boxing. When did you decide to start boxing? Well, I started um, two years ago, basically. I, um, I, had a little, my, I had my little girl. Okay. She's 10 now, so she would have been about eight. So can I just take you back? So from 12 to 17, was yeah. there a massive gap then? Massive, because I stopped, yeah. To you stop, just stopped? Just stopped, yeah. Okay, can, and, and you're, you're married? Yeah, I'm married. You're married? Yeah. Okay. So I'm married, um, my partner also done kickboxing and Thai boxing. Um, and we think that he fought for me one he day. He did, yeah, I think, back yeah. Back in the day, yeah. Up in, up in, well, we both fought in Epping Forest. Nah, Epping yeah. Forest Country Club. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Back in the 90s. That's it, yeah. I fought for a British title, actually, in Epping Forest. Really, yeah, yeah. And he also fought for a title, and his brother did as well. Yeah. And it was a really big show. Yeah, because in them days, I used to mix kickboxing. Mm -hmm. Well, I did kickboxing pretty much 
only, and then I started to bring the boxing on yeah. the board. That's mm-hmm. how I created the yeah. IBA. So you would have been, and your husband, one of the first forerunners of the transition that we did from kickboxing to boxing yeah. all them years ago. Yeah, really. Did you enjoy the Epping Forest Country? I loved it. It was a really big venue. It was really good. Yeah, yeah. it was a buzz. I remember I thought of a Scottish girl. And we got the way in, and everyone said, "Where's our girl? Where's the girl?" There was only girls on the show. She was called Fiona. I can't remember her last name. And there was a she's there on the way in, and well, look, she looked like a man. <laughs> she looked like she was like a bloke. Yeah. <laughs> Did you win? I can't remember. It, that was a draw as well, to really? be honest. Yeah, and it was blood. I got my nose broken the second round. By the fifth, it was blood everywhere. Yeah. So let's talk about that because earlier on you was telling us about what happened with your nose. Yeah. So was that the first time it ever got broken? Yes, it was, yeah. Did that ever put you off fighting that, hold on a minute, I've had a severe break of my nose mm-hmm. here, I don't want no more, I'm a, I'm no, a woman. Yeah, it didn't bother Didn't me. bother you at no, all. Didn't bother me. So let's go back, is that what caused the, you said you had your nose fixed? Um, I ended up having to have plastic surgery on my nose. On I had, your nose? I, that was when I gave up, yeah, I gave up everything then and I had my nose so that was in that fight at Epping Forest Country Club? It was the first time I got my nose broke, yeah. Right. Mm. First time. How yeah. many times you broke your nose? To be honest, I think it was about four times, I think, in the end. When I had when I had the surgery, they said the bone was so congealed at the top, they couldn't clear one of the, yeah, one really? of the sides, yeah. And then you had the plastic surgery? Yeah. Mm. And how long ago was that? That was when I was 18, I think. Mm. Okay. And did that put you off fighting? No. But you had the big long gap. Yeah. Now tell us about why all of a sudden you want to come back. So you, first of all, what I want to ask, you've got a very interesting profession, mm. yeah? Let's tell the, um, the viewers, what is your profession? Let's, let's get there. I run a nightclub. Okay. Yeah, so I manage a nightclub, which I've done for 15 years, right. which is all women working in there. So it's a, I manage a lap dancing club. Oh, really? Yeah. And that's down in Plymouth? Yeah. And you must have some tells that you can tell us. Yeah, yeah. What stands out? The sank stand out where you've had to deal with situations, maybe with well, men. I mean, not really with um. You don't have women come in, though. We have lots of women come you in. Do. Lots of women, lots of couples. Yeah, it's really? a really relaxed club. It's completely different to what everybody thinks it is and perceive it to be. Okay. So it's a, you know the rules in there. We have strict rules, so otherwise we won't be there. Do you know what? It's funny because I know a club up around this way that don't allow women to come in. Really? Oh, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Know. Yeah. yeah. No, we have we have women in, and surprisingly, now a lot of women come in. And they just sit, they they love watching the girls perform on the stage and really just really relaxing. It's a nice place to be. Okay. Is it like the better bing of the? Uh, no. No. Not like <laughs> that. The brownies, no. <laughs> no. Not like that. No. Yeah. yeah. So stories, anything? No, just really just. A, just um, only one where we've had like a man basically haven't went to grab a girl and the girl came out to get the doorman and the doorman wasn't very great so we had to get him out myself. So you did it? Yeah. So tell me about that scenario. So this guy's had a grab at one of the girls, yeah, one the of the girl, dancers. Yeah, she's come out to get the, the security man. And, and what did he say? Did he want? Well, I, I guess I got him out and he basically thought it was the, the, okay. the, the doorman that got him out so he wasn't too pleased when he realised it was, a, was me so, when he got him out. So when you went to tell that man he had to leave, yeah. what was his reaction to a woman? Well, he was quite feisty to be honest. Yeah. Was yeah. So what happened? So I just put him asleep in there. You put him in a hole? Yeah. 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 And then, um, Did you put him out, sleeper? Yeah. I see. Okay. <laughs> And then when he came around, he thought it was a doorman. I, I don't want to upset that. I knew that there was something a bit different about you, right? Mm. So, was that a chokehold, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I put him asleep there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and in your career, is that the only time you've had to do it? Yeah, no. No, it isn't. <laughs> I can tell you've done it a few times, haven't you? All right. No, so, we've come away from that, yeah? <laughs> so, you managed the club? Yeah, yeah, for 15 years, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's good. It fits in well. It's done really well with my training. I can get my training in the daytime yeah. with my coach, like one-on-one. It's brilliant all the time. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Do you know what? When I was watching you on the pads today, not, never mind about putting people out with sleep rolls, I thought to myself, and I spoke to my partner about it, you know, my, you know that women punching as hard or maybe harder than guys, right? That have you ever had a situation, maybe not in the club or anything like that, but out on the street where you've had to use the power and the skill levels no, that you've no, got? No. That's good. Especially the way that the, the world is out there at the yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you wouldn't think twice? I tried to talk if I could get my way out. I would now I'm older I think, you know, yeah. I would I would avoid situations like that anyway. You would. Yeah, and just walk away or try and Yeah talk my way out of it before I had to do anything like that. Because what I find is this, that many years ago I, I, I used to teach ladies and it was ladies kickboxing but it was a lot of the, 
defence in it, and I used to say to him, the biggest form of self-defence is to get out of the situation mm, and run. Definitely. Mm. If you can't, the punch mm -hmm. or the elbow. Never mind about too much grabbing wrist locks mm. if you've got an eight-end stone man. Do you agree with that? When you see a lot of this stuff where, you know, take the hand, you've got to fire, you know, six, seven, eight, nine stone lady, 16 stone guy, you try and take his hand to reject it. Do you think that works? No, it's not going to, is it? It doesn't work, <laughs> is it? But if you had to, and I'm not saying that women should, a great big right hand shot straight on the nose when you're punching with the power that we've seen could be the situation that gives you the gap, gap to get out. Yeah, to run. Yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. But it's good that you, you haven't actually had to come against that. And being in a, a fighting family, I would say, yeah. What about your mum and dad? Tell us about your mum and dad. What did dad do for a living? Well, my dad was a long distance lorry driver. He was okay. in the army and then he was a long distance lorry driver. All right. Um, my mum's always been a stay at home and looked after us and yeah. stuff. So they absolutely think I'm mad at my age doing this. But I just, at the same time, it keeps me fit, it keeps me healthy. Yeah. Um, it gives me some, you know, gives me a drive. Brilliant, brilliant. So when you got the phone call or the, the, uh, the message, message, yeah. what message did you Paul. tell us what you... A Paul, message, um, I think he, he rang me straight away and just yeah. said to me that you had contacted him and asked if we would like to be on one of your shows, um, which was brilliant because like down, in, like I say, it's really so hard to get me matched nothing up. Nothing happening there, no. Yeah, nothing. I haven't had a, I've only had two boxing bouts and it's been um, over a year since my last one. So. Okay. Big gap. Yeah, very. We got on to Queen, went to Queensbury, we went up to the sparring trials up in Queensbury, um, to, sorry, not up in Queensbury, up in, up, in, mm. um, up here to to get onto the Queen's Brew, which I did. Mm. And it was just basically just training to aim for that, which we said, which they said would be roughly around the end of June. And then, so we were looking to get something in between. In Detroit. Yeah, Paul was very it. pleased. Yes, really. I'm going to speak to Paul in a moment about that. But, um, so now that you've got this May 17th show coming up, um, Laurie Smith, mm -hmm. very experienced girl. And uh, have you done any homework? Have you yeah, looked? Yeah, of course. You, I think you, you, it's natural to look, I think. Yeah. You know, even though I, I believe in myself and I believe yeah. in Paul, yeah. for everything that he tells me as well, um, I put the training in, I put 100% into everything I do, mm -hmm. and anything you ask of me, I'll do it. Um, but I think, I, yeah, but I obviously look to see and to see what she's like, see, obviously, she's a self for and, you know, you need to do your homework as well. Yeah, you need to do your it. homework as well to see them. And what do you think, maybe some opinions of, men that think that women shouldn't fight, that they shouldn't box, they shouldn't be involved in combat sports. Let's look at boxing, forgetting about the other combat sports. Have you ever come across any type of reaction? Not what's happened in the nightclub or whatever you like that, but actually through family, through friends, you know, when they know what you do, tell me. No, I mean, most people, most people are supportive. Supportive. Yeah, supportive of me. They think it's great. They can't believe, like, at my age, that I actually, yeah. that I, how much I do, but to be honest, all the, all the training that I do and the work and then having a little one as well. And What does she think, your, your daughter? Yeah, she, she loves it. She, to be honest, she, she's um, a natural fighter. She's Is really, she really? Yeah, but okay. she just doesn't want to do it. She's, she okay. na naturally knows how to move, how, to, how mm. to throw a punch, everything, but she's not, maybe she's only 10, so, and she's got some power. <laughs> That's good, yeah. takes after mum. Yeah. Age is only a number. Definitely. And uh, like we spoke on the telephone the other day, age is only a number. And um, we saw a programme with two, well, they, I forget about pensioners, that won a, uh, a 12,000 mile journey across the, uh, of the whole of Asia. And the journey that you're on now, only having two boxing mm -hmm. bouts, will you continue that journey? Yes, definitely. I you really will. want to, yeah, I really want to. Yeah. That's good, because I, I see a lot of, you know, potential of you winning championship fights. Yeah.